I am the uh, only boy in my family. I got no brothers. I got three sisters. Growing up, I wanted to do uh, everything that my two older sisters did. The big thing that I really wanted to do that they did was uh, jazz dance. <laughs> if you guys are familiar with jazz dance or not, it's sort of a sassy hip hop dancing for uh, mostly small white children. Bumping <laughs> motion. Most routines have a breakdown of just like a like a sassy finger wag for like a minute and a half. It's, it's great. I would do more, but it would come off as racist. So I'm gonna stop there. But, uh, no connection with jazz music at all of any kind. Uh, they just call it that. It's what some someone's Midwestern mom said when she saw it for the first time. <laughs> Boy, those moves are pretty jazzy. It's a jazzy dance. But yeah, so my sisters, you know, uh, practice every week, recitals. It's a little brother. I tag along, beg my parents to let me join in. But, you know, I was the only boy, so of course I got the old uh, no son of mine is going to engage in fun, regular cardiovascular exercise. <laughs> yeah, you want to work out, you go play some baseball. Sport where you'll mostly just be standing there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it is. Something about, um, you know, I think it might be American dads of a certain generation. Uh, if you have a son, the worst thing that son can do is dance. <laughs> it's clearly some form of homophobia, but that doesn't really make any sense. I've never really been out at the dance hall and heard a lady say, Oh wait, that guy, he's got a good sense of rhythm, he can dance really well? Oh, gross, turn off, no thank you. Yeah, how about that guy off, standing off in the corner there, sweating heavily already, very awkward, now yeah, it's my type, right there. Yeah, I was watching t TV with my grandpa once, and uh, someone on the TV he thought was gay, dancing around, he said, that fellow's light in the loafers, it's supposed to be like a pejorative. But I would love to be called light in the loafers. It's like a high praise to me, you know, you're light in the loafers, that's good weight distribution, got good joint health. You're light in the loafers, they do not print your BMI in red text on your after visit summary. Thank you very much UCLA Health, got the message. But yeah, I think with jazz dance specifically, uh, the issue with my parents might have been, because you know, there was always one or two boys in the class, but they put them in some pretty uh, extravagant outfits. You know, they'd be in like a sequined vest, no shirt underneath, like a teal headband that says funk. <laughs> like a street gang of waiters. I think it was just a little too flamboyant for my parents, you know? Uh, so instead what they had me do was uh, take me down to the local Catholic church and be an altar server. It was great, you know, I got to a nice ankle-length maxi, natural chambray fabric, gold silk corded belt, all from anthropology. <laughs> Because you know that classic straight guy relationship uh, between a pubescent boy and a middle-aged man in Velcro dress shoes. <laughs> Helped him out every week, put out his finest table in, served wine to his guests. <laughs> straight guy stuff. <laughs> but uh, anyways, you know, a couple months ago my wife and I, uh, we took a trip over to Ireland. Which was great, we really liked it there. Um, I, for one, was pretty excited to, to learn a little bit more about my Irish ancestry. I'm actually half Irish, Dowling is an Irish name. Uh, so I read up on it. Uh, unfortunately, nothing I could find about the Dowling clan mentioned the genetic bedrock of, of my family personally, which is, you know, a real long butt cracks. <laughs> lucky Irish butt crack, anybody got those, no? <laughs> a Protestant crowd here. <laughs> Yeah, but you guys know, like, uh, you know, like the nape of the neck, I think? It's like the shoulder, bleed, shoulder blades meet the neck base. So. I'm asking. I don't have one. It's my butt crack. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I do have a line of thong overalls looking for investors. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Ireland, uh, it was cool. It was very different from here in, from here in California. We learned quite a lot. Uh, you know, like when you arrive in a new place, especially a big international airport, the international terminal, you get off the plane, the first thing you see is some kind of advertisement that really represents where you've arrived. Paris, you might get off the plane, you're going to see something for French wine country or the French Riviera. Well, in Dublin there, you get off the plane, first thing you see, it's butter. There's butter advertisements all the way down. Starts off, uh, you know, it made sense. It was like bread and butter, scones and butter, you know, meat and veg. 
got a little more aggressive as they went on. I think they ran out of ideas. The last poster I saw was just uh, Liam Neeson wearing a leather jacket, pretending a stick of butter was a telephone. <laughs> sense. But yeah, I thought the butter industry was pushing for more market share there, but nope, completely representative of what was going on on the ground there in Ireland. There is butter everywhere. Uh, I mean, you go to a restaurant, you gotta ask for water like twice. There's butter already there. Uh, you know, there's sort of the stereotype of the drunken Irishman kind of stumbling down a dark hallway, maybe looking for his keys or something. Uh, he's not drunk, he's having a massive heart attack. <laughs> Primarily cholesterol that they eat. <laughs> There, there is that uh, traditional Irish drinking culture there, and we did partake in that. It was great. We made our way down to the old pub there, got ourselves a pint of that Irish drink. Does anybody know what they drink over there in Ireland? No, oh, melted butter. It's, <laughs> you gotta go. It's great. All right, guys. I'm Dan Dowling. Thanks so much. Yay!